Jeff. Uh, <clears throat> again, uh, welcome everybody. I want to welcome everyone. This is a virtual meeting for the Eighth Avenue Safety and Circula uh, and Circulation Improvements City Project Number One Hundred Two Eight Four Two. Um, we have several people on the call uh, from the city of Fort Worth, including our engineering consultant um, and various others. Uh, we do, I don't know if we have council, Councilman uh, Elizabeth Beck on the call. This is Catherine Smith. I'm her district director. She had a conflict but I am here to um, represent her office and to use my ears for listening. Thank you for attending. Uh, welcome. This is, uh, like I said, this is the 8th Avenue safety and circulation improvements. Uh, this is tip number four for near South side uh, incorporated. Uh, Mike Brennan is representing uh, near Southside Incorporated. Uh, Mike, you have anything you'd like to say before we begin? Sure thing, Jose. Thank you. And uh, also Allison Docker from our team will be joining the call. Um, I just <laughs> wanted to just speak briefly as to the origins of this project in case anybody on the call um, doesn't know how this all came together. Uh, this goes back a few years down back to 2018, 2019, um, HDR is the engineering firm that we worked with to uh, to look at 8th Avenue roughly between Pennsylvania to the north and um, Arlington to the south and look for opportunities to improve uh, the way that 8th Avenue operates, uh, how safely it operates, um, and as well as some aesthetic potential aesthetic improvements. And out of that study, which looked at that whole corridor and um, put together sort of a, a, a vision plan for a series of improvements that could be made um, over the upcoming years, uh, these two intersections were identified as the, the top priority for safety and circulation improvements. Um, Jose mentioned the, the TIF district, Tax Increment Finance District number four. Um, we administer our organization near Southside Inc administers that TIF district, which is basically a, a an account uh, with funding that can only be spent within the boundary of the, the district on public improvements like the ones that we'll be talking about tonight. And uh, through uh, an effort to secure approval from the TIF board um, for both the design and construction of the improvements we'll, we'll talk about. That approval um, happened first initially in June of 2019. We went back last year, uh, or actually in, in 2020, and um, uh, once we had detailed design, we saw that we needed a little bit more money to um, complete everything that was needed, particularly at that Cooper intersection that we'll talk about. All of the funding was secured by the TIF. Obviously, we're working in close partnership, not only with the city of Fort Worth, but our design friends from Dunaway and from HDR. Um, they're on the call to provide the details. And um, with that, Jose, I will hand back to either you or Mary Hannah. And Allison and I are here to help answer any questions that might be coming out of, out of the neighborhood uh, anything that we can we can talk about as far as how the, the design came together. There have been stakeholder meetings prior to this. I think tonight's discussion will focus primarily on the construction phase, but we're glad to help with any of those questions as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate the, uh, the overview. It kind of gives a good rundown of the project scope and purpose of what our improvements are on the project. So with that, I'll, I'll move on. Um, here's the agenda of what I hope to cover and in, in my brief presentation, I'll talk about the whole project and summary of the improvements uh, throughout, throughout the whole project limits. 
a uh, little project overview. The project limits are, uh, as you can see on your screen, from they're on 8th Avenue from Cooper to Pennsylvania and the intersection at Mistletoe and 8th Avenue. Some of the summary of improvements are existing conditions. I apologize. Um, as you as you already know, there's no protected left turn at Cooper uh, or to turn onto Cooper from 8th Avenue. There's also no protected left turn lane uh, to go from Mistletoe to 8th. Some of the things that we plan to have corrected on this project is, uh, as you can see, this other existing conditions. We have uneven sidewalk, uh, non-compliant ramps, uh, damaged roadway, uh, some potholes that, and all these will be addressed during construction. Uh, ex here's some more examples of things that need to be fixed. You have sidewalks have been patched with asphalt. Um, and more non-compliant ramps. Uh, when I say non-compliant, I mean non-ADA compliant. More examples. Uh, this this here is down in various locations, but this here you can see areas of mistletoe where the sidewalk is uneven. The uh, sidewalk is obstructed. The uh, Etc. In this slide, we some of the proposed improvements that we have. Uh, the benefits will be uh, will be widening the street to allow a dedicated eastbound turn lane for the southbound traffic. Um, as you can see in the middle of the picture, towards the left hand of your screen, you can see the area where we plan to widen so we can fit that in. Uh, this will improve traffic mobility in a southbound direct, uh, direction. It also will improve vehicle and pedestrian safety in this area. This will include six new ADA ramps um, as well as signal, street light, and signing improvements. And along with it, we'll have uh, improvements in landscape and irrigation to help beautify the cityscape. Some more examples of the improvements are in this view. You can see, you can see where the areas in, in pink are the sidewalks, the area in green is the roadway where we'll be improving the, or widening and improving the asphalt to incorporate that extra lane. A little more close up view in black and white, in case the uh, aerial photography is hard to see. Here you can see where once we've taken and widened the street, you can clearly see the center lane is now available for left-hand turn traffic for eastbound Cooper. And we'll be restriping and repaving the whole intersection all the way up to Pennsylvania. At Mistletoe, one of the things that we have here is we're removing uh, the left turn we're removing the left turn movement for traffic going northbound on 8th Avenue from Mistletoe. This is the sole purpose of this is to reduce vehicle accidents and accidents with pedestrians. Uh, it also allows full ambulance access to the emergency drop off on Mistletoe and pedestrians will have a protected crossing with an island uh, from traffic. And we'll 
also be including landscaping to help beautify the neighborhood cityscape. Some of the signing that's going into this area, as you can see, various improvements in uh, notifying traffic of what, what is going in and what is planned to go in for this intersection to warn uh, drivers of uh, what's coming, as well as pedestrians crossing the street. Some examples of what this will look like. You have the uh, a rendition on the left, kind of what we're envisioning, how this should be completed, and an example of a new ADA compliant ramp we show on the right hand side. Here's some more examples of what the sidewalks and ramps will look like. Uh, our project schedule. Uh, we anticipate to start this coming May 23rd. It's a Monday, beginning at Mistletoe uh, Boulevard and 8th. And construction will continue through completion and construction activity will jump then to uh, the rest of the work for sidewalks and curbs on the northern section for uh, 8th Avenue. And then at that time in September, they'll finally finish demoing the road and paving, and they should be finished with all their activity around October 19th. At this point, this concludes my presentation. Are there any questions? Yeah, we got a question. Sure, go ahead. Uh, this is Art Brender, and my law office is right on the corner of Eighth and Pennsylvania. And I really couldn't tell from your diagram what you're going to do, but there's a tremendous problem with the traffic at that intersection, which I guess is going to get worse as they build that parking garage right there. I can't tell what you're doing at, at that point, if anything. Uh, where's your law office located? I can it's jump the corner, to the it's, it's at the, it's at the, well, it's at the southwestern corner of 8th Avenue in Pennsylvania. And we have the two offices right there. There's actually three homes. It's all, it, it, it's, it's amazing you don't know this, but it's actually a, uh, it's it's actually on the National Register as the 8th Avenue District. Uh, it includes those three homes on 8th Avenue and the two homes behind it on 9th Avenue. Okay. Okay. In other words, between 8th Avenue and Pruitt Street. Okay. And I don't know that maybe there's nothing going in there on this. The best I can tell, maybe that's the case. I don't know. Uh, and Pruitt, we're not doing any any improvements as part of this um, as part of this project. The green area that you see here indicates the paving limits. And that would be in front of your your business. Are are you are you taking any part of the sidewalk or anything like that or to to do this paving? Because it looks like to me you've got one, two, three four or five lanes there. There's only four lanes there now. Uh, yes. Okay, um, Go ahead, Mary. So, um, this is Mary Hanna. I'm an engineering manager in uh, neighborhood street city of Fort Worth. So by that section, you seeing, we will be transitioned to existing section. There is uh, a dedicated right turn from 8th Avenue into Pennsylvania, uh, which is going to be, that's why you're seeing five lanes, but it is part of Cook's Children Improvement. I'm sorry, I'm so, having a hard time understanding, ma'am. I, I just, I really have. Uh, okay, can you, can, Jose, can you go to the black and white um, picture, oh, yes. please? Um, there you go. Next one, yes, okay. Um, can you see the screen, sir? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay, so okay, if, my, my if building is the one you see. You've got you see on the on the upper part of the screen to the right. Uh, my yes. building is the big one. And then you've got two others right there, and then you have Pruitt Street. And uh, yes. it looks like to me what you're doing is leaving the original uh, curbing on the what yes. would be the west side. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. And then what you're doing is you're and you've got two lanes going uh, uh, going south. And then the two the lanes going oh uh, going excuse me north north you've got three lanes do you, is that right or am I am I reading it yeah the, the third lane yeah that's right the third lane is an improvement as part of Cook so that area saying the arrow only right that is part of Cook's improvement okay. uh, doing that curve and we are we putting the basement marking repaving the street after we finish. But are, are uh, you, yeah, it's, it's are, not, we are not affecting yours. They, there were some beautiful oak trees that had been growing there for about 40 years or so all along that street, which were taken up on one day by cooks when they were building this parking garage. Is that parking garage going to be right up on that on that uh, traffic lane without any, uh, I take it without any landscaping or anything like that? Is that right? Real, real quick, I'd, I'd like to address that comment on the lane. We're not adding an, a lane from existing. Existing conditions northbound uh, show two lanes and a dedicated right turn lane, and so we're maintaining that with this uh, new section. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what we're telling him. We're not changing that section in front of the future building. There was before this construction. There was, the there was no the right turn lane there. No, no, that's not right. We've only been over here for. You know, 22 years. I'm just telling you, that's not. There wasn't a right turn lane there. The right turn lane came right off of uh, where they now have those two things sitting there. But is you, there going to be any landscaping see... or anything? If you're going to do this landscaping, is there going to be any landscaping on the what would be the east side of Eighth Avenue along where that parking garage is? Yes, uh, Mike can address that. Yeah, I think it will be part of Cook's children improvement. So, as I have they complied know. with this guidelines, Mike? I'll defer to Justin or or somebody from Cook, but I, it's my expectation yes. that, that it will yeah. continue the the lights and the the trees that they have installed further south on Eighth Avenue. On, on yeah, the a... building the one the, the one that's uh, on on the corner of. Of uh, Rosedale, or the one that's uh, further north, the the new garage that is between Coop or uh, Terrell, and uh, I guess south of of Terrell. I see. Okay, they're going to do the same type is of that, landscaping. Is that correct, Justin? Yes, Mike, that is correct, and you know that portion of uh, improvements have gone through city review, the the standard process, and so everyone has reviewed, uh, everything is approved, and it will match the typical section. The 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 intersection there is where the problem is though. There have been numerous wrecks. They end up coming over into our property on a number of occasions because of the uh of the left turn situation. Is there gonna be doing anything about that at all? I mean there's a gazillion wrecks there. And the only reason there haven't been any lately is because the construction is so bad that there's you know hardly there's usually just one or two lanes each direction and that sort of thing, but before you started doing that construction, uh, you can look and see there's a gazillion different wrecks at that intersection. All right, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that the, the the team. Well, I guess they 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 stated that there are no changes to the configuration of the street as far as number of lanes and any of the turning movements at 8th and Pennsylvania. The only the only improvements will be just the resurfacing of the street and but no changes to no additional turn lanes or anything added at the Pennsylvania intersection. And they're not going to do any any landscaping on the west side of the street at all. Correct. All of that sidewalk stays as is, including you know, south of Pruitt the existing trees and as far as the like, for instance, they're not going to do anything about the the uh, uh, the ADA compliance with the sidewalks along the west side there. 
Which That's a good way, question. They don't comply, uh, by the way, in case, you, in case anybody's interested. <clears throat> Mary, can you clarify if, the, if any of the sidewalk work extends that far north? Uh, according to the um, curb, we were not touching anything. We were not touching the curb or the sidewalk um, on any of that. We were stopping on the east section of uh, what that is the only thing after that we are like you said we are um repaving existing street and putting new pavement markings but we are not changing anything we can look at it if any of the ramps and anything is not compliant we can look at that and check but this will go back to near south side since they are the ones funding the project yeah. um and see what's their budget and if it can be done or added or not. Well, the other problem is pedestrian traffic, I think is just gonna be able to go on the one side, on the east side, and then there really isn't any uh, pedestrian markings to that, that are left really <clears throat> on the north side of the street or on the west side of the street. Are they gonna do anything about that? Yeah, so we the, the only the thing that I think they we want all the public now to cross at uh, it's and Cooper. We're putting new signals, new street light, new crossing, new ADRM. So the main improvement since we are changing the street width is at the intersection of it and Cooper. Um, Jose, can you go to that? Uh, yeah, you can. You can see from the screen. You see new ADRM, new uh, pavement marking, crosswalk. And then at uh, Cannon, we're also doing the ramps there. So that's well, mainly it is, well. Excuse me. You can what I was Cannon? saying is, are you going to do that same thing at at Pennsylvania and uh, and Eighth Avenue? Because it's it, no, it, it we our stop stop. No, our stop stop even before we touch the intersection. We stopping. You, you see that uh, um, stop bar, the dark black line in right. the picture that's where our improvement stop so we are not touching anything in the intersection so that will be different scope we have to go and change a lot of things and touch the signal and everything that's what we had to do in um, the other intersection it, it's completely uh, changed the scope of the project yeah. Okay. Wait, this is Pennsylvania. Yeah, Pennsylvania is completely out of the scope. Are you able to note that there may be um, non-compliant accessibility ramps at Pennsylvania, and that those could be reported to the maintenance division, so that as they make those improvements across the city, considering that there are probably a higher proportion of folks in in wheelchairs around here that maybe this intersection could be prioritized for those types of improvements so the outside issue, of this project? Uh, Mike, you see there is, you see the law office as a, and you can see the driveway in that picture. You see the corner of Pennsylvania on the north side of the picture on the west side, whereas there is a cut, looks like a driveway. That's an issue for us to have a ramp there that's very difficult with this um, driveway. We have to reconfigure everything. You have to reconfigure the um, the signal. It is similar what we are doing at uh, Cooper. This intersection needs a whole new uh, signal and a whole new configuration. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to retain this driveway. Actually, uh, technically, based on the city rules now, that driveway is not permitted because it's too close to the intersection. There is no side distance, nothing. Um, that driveway will need to be moved. Um, <laughs> the, and so mainly the whole intersection is concentrating in the east side next to uh, Cook's children that have uh, ADA compliance ramp and signals. So okay, you can see the ramp see. here and everything on that uh, side, it is compliant. The other side, you are not permitted to cross it from the east. There is, there is no ramp. There is no ramp there. 
Um, and if you put in ramp, you have to put crosswalk. Uh, you have to allow people to come from uh, a cro crossing its avenue from Pennsylvania. And I don't think the signal is designed for that. So there, that, that's why I'm saying it is completely outside the scope of the project. I understand, but um, well, as long as there, <clears throat> you can't move that driveway because that's the only entrance we have. I mean, we have an entrance on both sides, but that's the one entrance we use frequently to get into our building right there. I know. And what it's, I was it's, talking it's, about it's, is so it's, well, what I was talking about how is we just the right kind of. All I'm talking about is putting the same thing that you have across the bottom, putting that on the on the north side, so that people who want to walk from uh, one side to the other, and there are there's a there's a whole big apartment complex in there, so it's being used a fair amount, and uh, the signals are not are not timed very well, and there's no real striping there or from across uh, uh, across Pennsylvania. I'm not talking about doing much more other than just making it look like every other intersection does in the city because this one doesn't. And I understand what you're saying, but uh, ADA rules, if I touch it, I have to touch the whole intersection. I cannot decide which one I touch and which one not. It doesn't work like that. If I touch oh. the intersection, that's what we're doing in Cooper. We are touching all four sides. Okay, but so you're, I, all I sorts of change, you're making all sorts of changes to the intersection on the south side. You're just not making any on the north side. No, I'm not making, in this picture you're seeing, I'm not making any changes. There was no, the there was no other making, lane. It's a, whole, it's a whole new lane that you've got there, at least if what I'm interpreting this thing correctly. There was no, only. No, 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 that's existing. We, uh, as part of our project, our this is an existing uh, Lane, we are not adding that. I, I just said we are not adding that. That's an existing one. You cannot see it now because cooks are building, but it is an existing. We it's are not, not changing the street width or anything. That was a sidewalk. You side can line. see that it's not dark. You can see how that line is not dark. That means it is existing. If you go to uh, Jose, can you go like one slide above? Do you see how this all, whole thing have dark lines? And then we have faded gray lines. The dark line is all new stuff, new curbs, new sidewalk. The gray stuff is existing. So we stopping at Cannon um, or a little bit like uh, on the uh, west side, but on the east side, we're going all the way to uh, Bright. So yeah, we are not changing anything. We're not changing the curb in your section at all. It's an existing condition. You may not see it now because folks are using this lane for their uh, construction and if they're affecting that lane and the curb, they're going to redo it, but it's existing. They're not changing anything. Um, we, are not, we are not doing anything to the east side. Only basement marking. We are rebaving the street, look nicer after all the construction, everything. And is stop, gonna, and excuse me, is there going to be a sidewalk? Crossing. Is there going to be a sidewalk no. on the east side? No, 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 no. You see the picture here? You see how in the alley we're sewing like dark line and at Cannon? That is where we're stopping our improvement on sidewalk. Yeah, it. but what I'm saying is there a sidewalk going to be on the uh, at, at, at Pennsylvania between, between Cooper or between Pruitt and Pennsylvania? Is there going to be a sidewalk on the east side of 8th Avenue? Yes. That will be part of Cannon. Yeah, okay. it's part of Cox Children Improvement. Yes, it is. Yeah. But it's and part of Cox Children, not part of the city project. And that's where there'll be some uh, trees and stuff like down the way. Is that yes. right, Mike? Is that yes. my understanding? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. But it's, we are not doing it. It's um, like that's why I was trying to say Cox Children doing that section. We're only doing the bathing uh, as soon as they finish um, to make it look nicer street in front of all these new improvements. That's it. Hopefully that answer your question. I, I'm so, I mean, I can, we cannot go above or more than the project scope. We are limited to the project scope and budget. Uh -huh. Uh, this is Jared Rankin with Winbeck. Um, I'm 
we're currently working on the projects there for children's. I do have a couple of concerns. Probably, um, probably we need to uh, meet outside of um, this event. Um, however, those two east lanes adjacent to the Dotson expansion and the garage expansion are paramount to um, our construction and our schedule. Uh, we are on very tight sight lines um, and that east facade of the garage is on our critical path. Um, and the, being able to use that lane closure to feed the, that facade um, is absolutely, we, we got to have it to execute our work. Um, we are going to have continued construction traffic in those lanes uh, supporting the projects through the end of this year. Uh, both projects are scheduled to complete in March of, of next year. Um, our concern is around the timing of this project and um, how it affects, impacts our schedules and uh, Cook's ability to uh, serve the communi community, um, as well as uh, how it would look if we had brand new street and the, the barricades come down and you've got um, a lot of uh, potential damage on the portion where we would continue to work if this project does move forward. Um, we also have a lot of construction workers that park um, on the west side of 8th Avenue um, that use um, every day use the intersection at Cooper Street. So uh, we would be very interested in, in the sequencing of the upgrades to that intersection. Um, and speaking for our client, there's uh, a lot of patients and families that visit the 758th Avenue building. Um, which is the building um, between Pruitt and I can't remember the name of the road to the south. Um, but their only accessible entrance to that building is uh, from the north. And so those folks come out of that building from the north, wrap around the building on 8th Avenue and go to Cooper. Um, so the, uh, our client would probably, when, when we can meet outside of this, they'd be very interested in the impacts um, to those folks and what kind of communication they need to put out for how long, so on and so forth. So um, we do have some, some concerns. Uh, the timing of the projected timing of this project does uh, pose issue for, for our completion for, for Cook. So um, I think Justin is going to help us schedule some time outside of this meeting to, to sit down and, and bet through uh, all those items so that we can both be successful and um, leave a, a beautiful product behind for the city. Where is the entrance to the parking garage going to be? Um, there's a uh, public interest zone, Pennsylvania, towards closer towards Thistle Hill, sir. Because I thought they were going to go on Pruitt Street, but that's not right. Is that right? Oh. Uh, not intended, sir. We, you know, you can't definitely can't tell public don't go this way, but the intended public entrance is on Pennsylvania. Okay, so I think that means that once again, because of what I was talking about, number of accidents and so forth, when people are turning left, they're going to have to, most of your traffic's going to come off of off of 30, and they're going to have to turn left there at Pennsylvania. And uh, that's sort of a, a tough deal right now. I don't know what they can do to make it better, but because uh, uh, there is a staggered light right now, but Sometimes uh, the traffic really builds up there. I don't know whether you thought that through or not, but uh, then you're going to have to. They're going to have to then make another left, another uh, when they when they come on to, off of uh, off of uh, thirty, and then they're going to make a left hand turn onto Pennsylvania, right, and then go further down and into the entrance. Is that what that's what you're anticipating? I guess is that right? Yeah, I'm not certain how the client, you know, they, they did put a lot of work into directing families on how to um, approach campus and where to park. And I'm certain that um, that's something that they've taken into consideration. And as they learn with the new facility that um, if if they continue, if they see issues there, that um, they'll they'll consider that in how they direct their pa families and patients to to get to campus. Well, how many how many park I mean how how many parking spaces do you have in that lot approximately? I believe it's somewhere north of seven hundred, sir. So there's going to be an awful lot of traffic then coming coming through there. Uh, 
more fun. This is a, this is Sam Worski with Cook Children. It is this is I mean the traffic is the difference is instead of going down they're still coming off Pennsylvania or excuse me off Eighth onto Pennsylvania. Right now they're going to that garage that sits north of the hospital. In the future they're going to stop just short of that and park in this garage. So the apart from the amount of traffic isn't going to change based upon what current traffic flow is, just just where which garage they're parking in is as far as the communication we in all the study we've done. Well, before what you had was a surface parking there, but you didn't have 700 parking spaces in it or whatever. No, but the 700 are, is parking currently in the garage that sorts, I mean, the garage is that's north of the hospital right now. We're just moving the parking where they're gonna be parking to better put them in front of the Dotson Specialty Clinic uh, there. So, I mean, really from a traffic flow pattern, there's nothing a lot changing and we've run uh, traffic studies and everything else on this to understand the impact to in and out of those garages as we as we stack those garages. Well, but the one the one further north you're talking about, it's a little further down the road so that the traffic doesn't build up. It's going to build up here. I, going in. I understand. I understand your point and we did studies on it. And again, this is more on the 8th Avenue improvement. We can talk offline of the garage and its impact, but I don't want to hijack this meeting to talk about that garage. Okay, well, when are you going to finish that garage, by the way? <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, be garage. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be finished with that garage. We'll be finished with that garage early next year. Oh, my God. Okay. We can coordinate with the work on the garage. Yeah, uh, Dunaway is both um, consultant for both projects, and we'll coordinate when we can do our improvement. We can work with the contractor. Both our contractor and uh, Cook Children contractor on that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Um, there was some good discussion there. Any uh, I, any questions in the chat that we need to discuss, Jeff or Mary? Don't see anything in the chat. Uh, anybody on online uh, have a, another question they'd like to ask or concern that they'd like to express while they're uh, while we're here on the call? Jose, are they working <laughs> under normal normal restrictions? Nine a.m. to uh, I can't remember the afternoon time to shut down. Oh, the work, normal work restrictions are 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Thank you. Um, let's see. That's really. Jose, there, is a there is a question in chat now. Okay. Um, uh, Blake, Blake would like to know what kind of lane closures can we expect during the project? Uh, Mary, would you like to address this? Or. So that yeah, that was a uh, question to the contractor. But our expectation it will be one lane at a time. They cannot work like they cannot close the whole Eighth Avenue or all of that. So I think the only thing we can approve them is close one lane at a time to work on it. But uh, they submitting their traffic control to the city uh, to give approval uh, from uh, transportation uh, division and make sure they are not impacting the traffic. Okay. Thank, hey, thank you. This is Blake Hunter, Thorke at Medical City Fort Worth. I'm on for uh, Ben Coogan, our CEO. And yeah, I was just wondering with the flow of traffic from 8th Avenue turning on to Cooper for our employees, I was just trying to figure out what I should be telling them in terms of lane closures to expect. So thank you. Yeah, they, we are going to widen the street first. So they're going to demo existing curbs one side at a time. So uh, when they demo the curb and sidewalk, they're going to install the new curb, widening yes. the street, yes. and then go to the other side, widen the street, uh, close that lane, widen the street, put the new curb, and then we start the building improvement. So <laughs> Cooper and uh, from Cooper to Pennsylvania will take a while because it also in, uh, involves new signals, new signal foundation, new signal, Everything is new on that intersection, so it will be 
you will see like a little bit slower <laughs> movement uh, because they have to go and do each intersection with the new signal and all of that and then take out the old one, widen the street. Then at the end, we'll do the bathing. So uh, we you. cannot close more than that, but we keep, we'll keep a uh, near south side uh, informed what we're going to do and they can share this information with uh, their stakeholder. And we will put it also on the city website, which lane we are closing and from what date to what date. Okay, very good. And so, I mean, the main point of the project, I'm just, I hopped on a few minutes late and couldn't see the, uh, the, the uh, PowerPoint, but we're just adding a southbound turning lane onto Cooper, is that correct, from 8th Avenue? So yeah, uh, Jose, can you go? So we're doing two intersections. Okay. One of them is this Cooper. So mainly, yes, we are widening because we're adding that protected uh, left turn. So you, I'm sure your employee will like that because they will have like now protected left turn with new signals. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Jose, uh, this is Mike Sanborn with All Saints. Can you go to the picture that you showed on the mistletoe improvements? Definitely, bear with me. Something tells me I went the wrong way. Maybe. Whoops. Right, there we go. Was it the, okay. So really the material change is we're clarifying where the left turn lane onto Magnolia going southbound on 8th is, so that yellow stripe. But that yellow stripe then also creates a left turn with a median uh, onto mistletoe when you're going northbound on 8th. And it looks to me like those little green things are going to be trees there. Is that correct? Yes, that would be correct. And then the mistletoe going westbound will only be able to turn right. There will no longer be a left turn option coming off a of mistletoe. Yes, that is correct. I think that'll reduce some traffic accidents there. So that's good then. It'll be harder to get to Derek Allen's barbecue though. That's the only bad thing. Well, I can't help you with everything, but <laughs> I know food's priority and it's just, uh, we'll have to find new ways to make sure that we get our tummy satisfied. But with that, I do appreciate everyone's time. Uh, unless there's any other additional questions, um, this, this concludes our presentation. I appreciate everyone in attendance. Um, again, let me jump to the end if you have, uh, if you need my contact information. Uh, my office number is on the screen as well as my email. Um, thank you for thank you for attending this uh, virtual meeting. Thank you, Jose. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, Mary. Thank you.